So today we are going to be taking a look at our 1800 watt off-grid solar system. It consists of six 310 watt used solar panels, a 3000 watt grow watt hybrid inverter, and two Chins 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. This system was not meant to be entirely off-grid. It does use generators for backup. As seen here, we were testing the transfer switch, which worked flawlessly with the 4,000 watt generator. However, the two Predator inverter generators were not capable of supplying sufficient power through the grow watt to power the AC unit. The system is capable of powering the AC unit without the generators when it has full batteries. However, doing that throughout the heat of the day will likely result in dead batteries at night. Alright, so we're back at the off-grid grow watt. We're using those inverters, inverter uh, predator ones for generator. There's also the remote start champion. Oh wait, not champion. Furman. Um, so what did we do today? We were sitting at a base load of about 700 watts it was just under 700 watts and so we have swapped out the inverter the coach inverter for this victron uh, I'll, I'll put in the screen or down below uh, 24 to 12 volt battery charger float charger tender or it could just be a straight dc charge power supply um, Let's see what our current usage is. 190-ish watts. And on the DC side of this, we're drawing 5.5. So 5.5 times 27. Math is coming up right here. It's uh, roughly 200, I'm guessing. Oh, we just... Okay, so the uh, house pump just turned on. So the water pump turned on, that's what caused the little spike there. But the float charging seems to be pretty decent. And this is with a 1 amp draw on this battery. There's like a 1 amp base load draw on these batteries to run the refrigerator and the furnace and the onboard stereo uh, to keep those powered up all times. So yeah, so I'll just kind of run through the screen here so you can see what everything's at. We do seem to be dropping the battery voltage. Although at 27 volts, we probably cut off the charging. Um, the chins, 24 volt. And, uh, limit voltage, over voltage reconnect is 27. Float charging is 27.6. So. Um, yeah, we are definitely dropping. So, let's see how our solar panels are doing. Hold on a sec. All right, so the voltage is bouncing around, so it must be either the charger in here or the BMS is in there. Because um, we're just kind of bouncing around that 27. We'll drop down to 26.8. And we'll bounce up to 27.2. So it must just kind of be the the charger. But we'll we'll uh, pop through the settings here just so everybody can see what we're settings we're running. Oh, so we are set at 27. So, might want to bump that up.
Oh, CU4. So this is setting 19. Let's see what that is. And that girl lock. Stand by. All right, so setting 13 is when it switches between solar, uh, solar battery mode when selecting SPE priority. And then 19 is our charging voltage. And then 20 will be our floating charging voltage. So let's see what 20 is set at. Uh, 27.6. So, anyways, let's keep going through these. So, did we accomplish our goal? Yes. Our estimate for usage was a little under by the end users, but ultimately, we got a system that lasts them till about 10 o'clock at night. It'd be nice if it was a little bit longer with the addition of probably two more 200 amp hour batteries, we could get there. That's gonna necessitate some more solar panels though, especially coming into winter. All in all, great system. And based off of current fuel usage and fuel savings, we're looking at about a year and a half payoff. Not bad investment. And it's quiet during the day. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.